Alright, so I'm going to go over the law of mass conservation for fluid mechanics using a pretty simple basic problem. <clears throat> I'm going to start out by writing out the law of mass conservation, which comes out as mass conservation. So we're going to do the change in time times the integral of the control volume times rho dv plus the integral of the control surface times rho v in dA. And what this basically is is <coughs> DDT will be your change in time and that's over the control volume and so for instance if we have a steady state problem which is what we're going to go over then the state over the control volume is going to be the same at each point at all the times so basically we're just going to be able to cancel this out for a steady state problem and so for our problem that we're going to do, we're going to draw the pipe. Okay, then we're going to call this point one. We're going to call this one point two. This one point three. And we're going to have one more right here. We're going to call this point four. And we're going to call, we're going to say this is the entrance of the fluid that we're going to use. And we're going to have an exit here, here and here. And so next <clears throat> I'm going to give you the different parameters of the problem. So our area for one is going to be equal to 0.2 meters squared. The area for two is going to be 0.2 meters squared. And the area for three is going to be equal to 0.15 meters squared and the mass flow rate out of our small point 4 or sorry volumetric flow rate is going to be equal to 0 0.1 meters cubed per second and we're going to give you the volume or the velocity at 1 to be 5 meters per second and we're going to try to find the vo velocity at 2. And we're going to give you the velocity at 3 to be equal to 12 meters per second. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw our control, or our control surface. And so we're going to draw our control surface around all the entrances and exits. So I'm going to just draw a dotted line around all my entrances and exits to represent my control surface. And so since we already said that this is going to be a steady state problem, meaning there's going to be no change with time, we've already crossed this part of our equation out. And so what we're left with is this part right here. And this is all going to be over the control surface, which we just drew. So if we rewrite this for the control surface, we're going to say 0 is equal to. Now, the um, v with the vector sign dot n hat, um, we're going to say this is kind of determining the direction of the velocity flow we're doing. So, for our case, we're going to say 
row, and since it's an entrance, all the entrances are going to be a negative flow velocity. So we're going to say row negative v, and then a1, so this should be like that. And for outward flows, or the exit flows, we're going to say all of those are positive, so we're going to say plus row v2, a2, plus row v3, a3, plus row q4. And you know, volumetric flow rate is just velocity times area. So now what we're going to look at is this is going to be an incompressible flow because all of our all of our rows or densities are going to be the same so we're just going to take out all of those and now let's see we have we have our v1 we have a1 we have no v2 we have a2 we have v3 and we have A3 and we have Q4. So now all we're going to do is rearrange the equation to find V2. And that is simply going to be set up V2 is equal to V1 A1 minus V3 A3 minus Q4 all over A2. And so when we plug in all of those values, we're going to get negative 4.5 to be our velocity.